What's up YouTube? Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Tommy Martin and I'm a medical student doing my clinical rotations in Elizabeth, New Jersey. In this video, I want to talk about how to memorize throughout medical school. This is probably one of the biggest, most dreaded topics that anybody ever encounters throughout medical school. I remember my first week of medical school when I was in biochemistry, and after the first week, we had already covered all of the material I did all throughout undergrad. And I was crying out like, how in the world can I memorize all this information? Okay, well, I want to share with you guys some tips that I have about memorization. So stick around and see what tips I use to help me memorize a vast amount of information throughout medical school. The first thing I want to do is build this foundation of memorization, okay? And that starts off with healthy lifestyles. So the first thing I want to talk about is good sleep. It is so important in medical school to have good sleep habits. It is essential to have around six to eight hours of sleep every night. Now I'm probably the worst person in the world to talk about this because I do not get very much sleep at all. But it is so important to get good, good sleep. Now I'm not saying 10 to 12 hours. We don't want to be like the a Snorlax of the Pokemon world on one side or even on the opposite end of the spectrum being like the walking dead not getting enough sleep. So make sure you try to hit that six to eight hours and it's been proven to prolong memory and help you memorize faster. The second thing I want to talk about is having good nutrition. Eating a good balanced diet is so important and it has been proven also to enhance your memory. Now in medical school you're going to have so much stressed food thrown at you. You're going to have cookies here, pizza here, and fried foods here and you just want to eat it all. But I want to encourage you not to really try to have a good balanced diet throughout medical school. Now there have been a lot of studies about certain foods, maybe certain fatty acids and different things that are better for nutrition, but it hasn't been too well proven or documented yet, so I'm not going to go into that. The third thing that I want to talk about is exercising. Exercising has been proven to prolong and enhance your memory as well. So I want to encourage each of you to work out every single day, whether that be a 15 minute run, a 10 minute walk, or an hour workout. That's what I did every day. I worked out for an hour. And I found that just so essential to help decompress my brain and just energize me to hit it hard again. The next thing I want to talk about is taking breaks. Taking breaks is very, very important. If you don't, you're gonna to come to a point in the day where you just wanna grab a brick wall and just beat your head up against it because you can't take it anymore. So take those breaks, whether it be a 15 minute nap or just 10 minutes talking to your parents, whatever it is, make sure you take breaks throughout the day. The last thing and the most important of this foundation of memorization is faith. I don't know what your faith life is, but for me, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe that he is the son of God and came to this earth and lived a sinless life so that he could die for me upon a cross so that I may have a personal relationship with him and have him as my Lord and Savior so that I can live for eternity with him. And I have to tell you, my fourth term at St. George's University was the hardest year of my life. I had so many family members die, my family fell apart, and I was in the hardest term of medical school while being the president of a Christian student association at St. George's. But during that time, during the, my hardest moments of medical school, God came through for me. And I said, no, I will not grow tired. I will not grow weak and weary. I have the God of this universe that has brought me to medical school to help me here at this current time. So no matter what obstacles I'm going through, no matter, no matter what tribulations I'm going through, I will stand firm in my faith and declare victory in the name of Jesus. And whatever his plans are for me, I will rejoice in those. So faith life is very, very important and help me more than anything. Okay, now let's get to what you guys really want to know and the strategies to memorize. All right, so, so number one, flashcards. Flashcards have been proven to be very effective. And why is because they utilize some of the other major, major aspects of memory. Okay, and so that's active learning and spaced repetition. Okay, and so how a deck of flashcards does that is you have a deck of flashcards, and as you do one, you don't know what the back of it says, so you're actively learning, trying to engage what's on the back of that without seeing through the paper. 
And then, so that's making sure you're actively learning that. But then also, if you get it wrong, you put it in this pile. If you get it right, you put it in this pile. And when you restack your deck, the ones that you got right go on the bottom, the ones you got wrong go on top. And you keep doing that. So you're engaging active learning and spaced repetition, which are two important things which I'll talk about later. And this has been a proven method to work very well. The next thing I want to talk about are mnemonics. I love mnemonics. And I actually have a list that I'll post below of different mnemonics, but they help a ton of why is because they'll categorize different things in your brain to really help you uh, remember a vast amount of information. Okay, so a mnemonic that I use is TRAP for Parkinson's. So you have T-R-A-P, so Trimmer, Rigidity, Akinesia, Postural Instability. Or I have Crash and Burn for Kawasaki's Disease, where you have Conjunctival Injection, Rash, Adenopathy, um, the S is strawberry tongue and then hand and feet edema. There's so many different mnemonics that I could give you guys that I've learned throughout this time that can help you memorize a vast amount of information. So that's another great way, which I'll post a list of the ones that I have below. Uh, the next method I think is the method of loci, and this is the method that Picmonic kind of uses. And so this is creating a storyline in your brain that kind of helps you walk through um, a story that helps you uh, place different things throughout your memory to help you recall them. So an example that I just made up was Parkinson's disease. That there was this 87 year old man named Louis Sinclair that went to the park to buy drugs and as he was buying cocaine he got trapped by the cops so he tried to shuffle away really quickly and fell down. And so what that is is 87 means it's an older man. Um, Louis Sinclair it's uh, it's also associated with Louis bodies and Sinclair, it's in the Sinclair gene, went to the park for Parkinson's disease, got trapped by the cops, trapped was the mnemonic I told you guys earlier, tremor, rigidity, akinesia, and postural instability. He shuffled away quickly because of the shuffling gait. Um, to be honest, I forgot what the cocaine was about. But that kind of shows you what the storyline does and helps you recall different things. And Picmonic is a great resource to help you with that because they've already created thousands of those. And I'm actually doing a free giveaway for a free subscription. Um, which I'll link the video below as well that you guys could check out. Okay, the last two things are the two that I used the most throughout medical school, and so that's what I want to talk about really quick. And I would say they are the most important. Okay, and why is because all the other methods we talked about you could utilize in this. This is active learning. This is so, so, so important. And that is how I was able to memorize pretty much this whole book of first aid. I almost had the whole thing memorized and why was because of active learning. So what does that mean? Well, what that means is when you come to a page in a book or whatever study resource it is, what you have to do is not look at it. There are so many medical students that just keep rereading and rereading and rereading. My five-year-old nephew can reread something. That does not mean you know it. So you need to see if you know it. So what you do is when you have something in front of you, say you notes, know, turn it over and do not look at it. And try to recall from memory as much as you can on that page. As much as you can. Do not turn that over until about three minutes have passed where you can't recall anything else. And then turn that page over and try to see what it was that you did not remember and then study that. And then your next pass through, do the exact same thing. Every time you study something, it should be doing that, making sure you're engaging your brain. Is this gonna be harder? Yes. Is it gonna be more uncomfortable? Yes. But are you gonna memorize a lot more? Yes. I promise you, I promise you it works if you do it and train your brain to recall information. And each time you trigger it, the next time it's gonna be triggered faster and faster and faster. Okay, now the last method. Um, and this is spaced repetition and this has been proven for years that this is the most solid way to memorize. And if you use all the other tactics, if you use Picmonic, if you use mnemonics, if you use flashcards, whatever it is, um, the active learning, if you use all those methods combined with spaced repetition, you can memorize a lot. So what does this mean? Spaced repetition, I've actually done a video on in my study tips that I use a five pass system. And so the way I utilize this is my first pass is pre-reading. I pre-read a, a lecture before I know that I'm gonna have the lecture. And then my second pass is in that lecture, I see the material again. My third pass is in that same day after lecture, I study that material for about an hour. So I've seen three passes in a span of about 24 to 48 hours. And then 
within 24 to 48 hours, you should see that material a fourth time. Okay, so you're going through it again, but each time you're going through this, you're not rereading it. You're recalling it from memory using that active learning technique I told you guys about, okay? And then your fifth time through should be within 72 to, or just say three days to five days after that. So within one week, you've seen that material five times. And by that fifth time, you should be able to recall almost 100% before you turn it over to see what you missed. And then just to, just to put the icing on the cake, two weeks later, go through it again. Okay, and this is what I've used all throughout medical school, all throughout my step prep, all throughout my clinical rotations, all throughout memorizing this book of first aid. And if you want to memorize this without wanting to throw it across the room, make sure you use these methods and it will work for you. Okay, so just to recap, flashcards, mnemonics, Picmonic using the, the system of creating that storyline, active learning, and spaced repetition. Those are my tips for you. Please utilize them. Let me know if you have any questions, and I would love, love, love to help you guys out. Guys, we're not memorizing to make great grades on the test. What we're memorizing for is so that when we see a patient, we have no idea what's going on that our minds are already clicking away to come up with a diagnosis so we can treat our future patients the best we can. We're, coming, we're becoming doctors to love on our patients and to love on the world, not to make A's on these exams. I love you guys. If you guys have any questions, let me know. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel by clicking right here. I love you guys. Have a great day.